welcome to another edition of After the Whistle. We are in March, March 6th. I'm here, Todd's here. We got the books here as well. Yeah, they're gonna be here for a while. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't got if you haven't got your copy yet. When's the expiration date of when I need to remove these books? There ain't no expiration date. I mean, I'm always gonna keep one up here just because you know, ain't that what people do with their podcasts? They put their little accomplishments and things yeah. they created and done. Ain't no expiration date. All right, if you put yeah. that on the hold the rest of the year until you write a new one. Yeah, hey, that's just true. But you know, I'm just not one of those people. Hey, that's, man, so, hey, I, hey, that's what we hear. Um, <laughs> I was in Houston over the weekend, and uh, <laughs> the Houstonians are some hilarious people. What part? Shoot, um, by like Midtown, so I don't know. You still north? Probably, probably, <clears throat> like around near Prospect Park. I got to Yeah, I got yeah. yeah, That place is that place is too damn big. Yeah. That place, that place is just too damn big. So I, I met this one girl. And I, I was talking to her, like her tattoos and stuff like that. So she asked me about mine. I was like, hey, I got a few. I got, I got some on my back. She's like, oh, what's on your back? I was like, it's like a King of the Jungle theme. She's like, oh, so you Tarzan or something? <laughs> In my head, I'm like, he trying to be Jane? <laughs> like, I'm just saying. Could have swung through. Like, <laughs> hey. And then another one, I tell her my name. And she was like, her reaction was like, oh, my gosh. Is that like? Black Panther or something, because it sounds like, <laughs> said it just like that. <laughs> I just would have said show, sure. yeah, she actually. <laughs> she was black, <laughs> she was black. Mm. Oh. Um, I mean, you could have said, you know, it's based on some of your ancestors. No, we eventually told her, I eventually <laughs> told her, but. It was just like the way she said it. I was I mean, just like what hilarious. Mukala, <laughs> bass bumping in the background. Yeah, I, I could, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I just found it funny just the way she said it. I was like, I'm like, okay, Hillary. <laughs> but to us, like, you might have been the first person she's met with an actual like I official think, African name. I think so. To us, like, that's normal. Like, yeah, not that. <laughs> we had it was a very interesting conversation with that young lady at that bar. Just interesting. Like, she's like. Yeah, I don't eat meat. I don't go to the rodeo because I don't like like cruelty to animals and stuff like that. I was like, all right, cool. But you know the <laughs> funniest thing about Houston, I tell people, Houston's a culture shock if you're from the melting pot yeah. of the north because you're only gonna come across like black folks, white people, and Chinese people. For some odd reason, I show pictures of my friends and people in my area. If people done it, they were so amazed by Dominicans. <laughs> oh yeah, and you see Mexicans, but like by Dominicans, Puerto Ricans. Right, right, right. They're so amazed by like um, Cambodians and yeah, just yeah. all the other ethnicities of the main ones that we we known of. Yeah, because we yeah, because they're for, or the sub. Yeah. I don't want to say sub anything, but you get what I'm saying. The ones yeah. that are not not as prominently known throughout the world. Yeah, that's why sometimes when I go places and I'm like. And they don't have certain like demographics that I'm no, I'm used to seeing. I just be like, huh, okay, that's weird. Cause I mean, it was. I mean, I met one person. I forget where they're from, but they they had never met a Caribbean person before in their life. Yeah, it's you crazy. Know? Right. You know. And then you like, hear about Gil Reeves talking about Cape Verdeans. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, right. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's like, yo, what's going on? And the other parts of the, you know what I mean, the U.S., but when they really call our region the melting pot, like, mm -hmm. it, it really is. We, we don't understand how fortunate we are yeah. to have so many cultures in our city alone. Just because, yeah. like, when I go to other cities in, in this state alone, it's like, yo, there's nothing to eat. <laughs> there's nothing. That, nothing's appetized. Nothing catches me. Like, right. out here, so you're going to find at least something. Yeah. You know and I mean? also, like, the Northeast, it's just more, it's more progressive. Like progressive wise, like little, as far as like healthcare. Sometimes you know, a little like, too progressive. A little too, but a little too progressive sometimes. <laughs> we, we don't want to touch too much on but, it. Like, we don't but, want to know. But it's folks. like like with like healthcare yeah, and like no, certain things. Like that's why education. That's the main reason why a lot of people from uh, different countries move over to this region is education. Yeah, but as a whole, like, like subject matter and stuff. But yeah. 
Get rid of them cats. Get rid of these standardized tests that determine if kids graduate or not. Oh, yeah, Basically, yeah. like my thing is, why am I going to school for all these years if I gotta just take this one test to determine if I get a diploma or not? Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it just doesn't make sense to me. Shout out to St. Mary's. That was a blessing in disguise, oh, man. Yeah, MK, yeah, y'all don't gotta take the MKS. You know, you know, I, 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 like, I felt like we were taking that until somebody told me, like I think uh. a month in, my freshman year. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> Bro, you don't understand the weight off my back, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know who got some weight off their back, kind of? The Denver Nuggets. They released They released Russell Wilson, but they released him, but they still got to pay him. Like, so I just read oh, something. Oh, you went to Denver Broncos. I said Nuggets? Yeah. My bad. I uh, thought I was tripping up like, Oh, uh, yeah. Up, my up. bad. Denver Broncos. <laughs> Mile high. I sound high when I just said <laughs> that. Sound like <laughs> yeah, I sound like I was high to say that. Sorry, the Denver Broncos released Russell Wilson, but they still got to pay him. I don't. I just read somewhere like the contract extension they gave him hasn't even kicked in yet. I'll yeah. be honest, man. I feel like social media is kind of destroying everything. It's giving people less leash, less room for failure. Yeah. That's everything. I just feel like people are like what they call like sub succumbing to the pressures of society and, you know what I mean, the media and everything else rather than giving this man a third opportunity because he, he played awful his first year. Second yeah. year, they were moving in the right direction. It seemed like yeah. they were progressing somewhat. So, I mean, I would have given him. Was this a second year? Different? Yeah, yeah, they only a second year, bro. Yeah, a second year, different coach. You get what I'm saying? Like, this doesn't doesn't make sense, man. Like, yeah, y'all got to lay off people. Granted, I'm not a huge Russell Wilson fan. I don't think he's that good. But I have enough respect for the man to just allow him and his talents to develop with the team and the pieces that are put against, put with him and have a new coach. Yeah, you know and, I mean? the, and the coach he has now, it seemed like the coach was, like, at this rate from all the stuff we're, we're learning about, it seemed like he was trying to throw him under the bus for, like, the longest time, just trying to find a way to not play him, trying to find a way to play somebody else. Yeah. And it's kind of like... This coach is coming in. Okay, we know you got this cachet from winning that one Super Bowl with the with the Saints, but I mean, you had Drew Brees all that time. Now you ain't got Drew Brees. You don't look like such a great coach, especially with the stuff you're doing. I ain't gonna lie. I kind of forgot he had Drew Brees <laughs> based on some of the things he's doing and some of the things he's known for. You know, he's like the kingpin of the mm -hmm. NFL. <laughs> like the hitman on call. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I don't, like, he just seems like, a, you know, unfortunately, seems like kind of like a sneaky individual. Yeah. Instead of, instead of just being stand up. Like, you, everybody getting paid millions of dollars. Yeah. You can be honest with a person. Yeah. Like, brutally honest. Like, how mad can a person be? He's still going home, successful, successful, uh, successful life situation, and he's going to get moved on to another situation. Right. And it was just like, you, sometimes it takes a little, it, it, sometimes it takes more, longer than one year to fully understand or fully be, you know, in a, uh, have that quarterback coach relationship. It, it, you just got to know each other. Sometimes it takes longer. Remember, they say it's like a marriage. Right. How long have most of y'all known y'all wives? Or how long have you known your girlfriend before you, right. she became your wife? Right. Definitely longer than a year. Longer yeah. than two. Longer than three. For logical people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, it's all about just letting things marinate and giving things some time. Yeah, and this was, and this is what we see with, like, quarterback. The, I mean, the NFL quarterback gets all the blame and all. Well, Russell Wilson got, got all the blame for everything. But they... They never, like, nobody's discussing the surrounding pieces, how some of the surrounding pieces around him underperformed. Because I'm looking at Wilson's stats right now. 26 touchdowns to eight interceptions, which is not bad. Not not, bad. not great, but it's not bad. 3,000, 3,070 yards, which is good. 66, 66 completion percentage. Not bad at all. So he had, like, he had decent stats. I mean, yeah, he had decent stats. But it was like, yo, know, this is just under what, one year under this new offense, a new offense. So I imagine now he fully understands it. He probably could have been better. But, but you also, know, the receivers and stuff like that could have been better. But also remember, the more they love you, at some point they're going to hate you just as much. Yeah. And he was the down of the NFL for some years. So I don't want to say he's deserved, but everything comes full circle and everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to get the hate, you're going to get the love, and vice versa. So, yeah. hopefully he can play through it, and then he can get Tebow back on his side. But remember, he was they acted like he did everything in Seattle. Oh, well, shoot. They should have fired the whole team after they let the Dolphins score 70 points. 
on him. I, I, <laughs> that, that's when you got clean house. You're like, all right, man. You let a team score 70 points. That's kind of ridiculous. But he'll be a free, he'll be a free agent. Somebody, somebody going on a veteran quarterback. You know, might be, might be the Patriots. Might be the Raiders. He could be petty and go to the Raiders, and you he never seems, know. He seems like he's. On that level. Yeah, he, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with the, with the Broncos. Free agency's coming up. Another trade that did not turn out to be so well. The Jamal Adams and Seattle Seahawks time has just come to an end, and I felt like he was never on the field. He was always hurt. And this was a guy that was projected to be a really, really good safety coming out of college. He had a decent first year with the Jets, and then they, get, they traded all them picks for him. And it was just he was always hurt. Every, I don't think he, I don't think he played a full season at all. And now, a trade gone wrong. I mean, I, I don't have too much to say on it because I don't follow him. I don't follow the Seahawks that much. And like you said, he hasn't played much. So there really isn't much for me to speak on. If you can't stay on the field, it's kind of hard for him to pay you. Well, I'm be, I'm bringing up his his uh, stats in a second. Yeah, I'm not gonna just ramble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, like he's one of those things. So hopefully, he gets he gets in a better situation, gets in better health. I don't know what type of what type of injury did he have, like knee. I, and... I think head, shoulders, knees, and toes. He it was everything. Oh, <laughs> everything. He was yeah. Now nah, he played. So he got traded to Seattle in 2020. Uh, played 12 games the first year, 12 games the next year. Then, then the next two years he played a total of ten games. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to get to somebody that's you know more durable, man. Yeah, you, you just especially especially with a team like that that likes they they need those defensive guys. That's the identity of that football the team. Doom, right, 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 right. And and he was kind of like his playing style was kind of almost like Earl Thomas going being able to go sideline to sideline. So they thought that was kind of the replacement, younger. Got the get, got the same type of athleticism, but then, yeah, it's just. But you traded so much for him, like they traded a lot to get him, and now yeah, it's, it's kind of like blah, blah. So I'd be I'd be tight. <laughs> I'd be so mad, like bro, we did all this. You thought we thought we'd come be at least like a decent team and making the playoffs. But, 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 but yeah. well, with football, you can only be so mad because it's a durability issue and not yeah. a real play issue. So when he's on the field, he's successful. He does his thing. But when he's not on the field, that's when they're hindered the most. So, yeah. you know, that's just part of football, especially that sport alone. How healthy can you be yeah. a full season? Yeah, they also cut the, another another safety, Quandre, D Quandre Diggs. Mm -hmm. So all this, most of it, this is the time teams are starting to cut players because the free agency is coming up. They need to save themselves some money for, for the cap space, which the NFL cap or route league wide has increased. So... I read in this, this why it's this saved the the Seahawks with him. It wipes off the sixteen point five million off the Seahawks books, as well as seventeen point five million of non guaranteed that he was supposed to make in twenty twenty five. So, you know, they got they got a little leverage for themselves to get themselves a decent player. But it's Seattle yeah, that's another friend. They're going over to like they turnover over there. Big old turnover. New head coach. Man. Pete is up in the box. I think man. Pete. I think Pete wanted to get high and just relax in the house. Cause I mean, a man got a full head of gray. <laughs> like so, I, I mean. Keep, and Pete, oh, too. To, I mean, I don't know what you want to do. <laughs> Pete, oh, it's about that time you just just kick back and uh, relax, relax, Pete, relax. Uh, all right, we got some other NFL news. Like I said, pre. Um, Free agency is coming up, so we got people getting deals. We got people getting franchise tagged. We got a whole bunch of running backs that are going to be free agents. We got Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley in the free agent market. Some dude named uh, who was Eric Kendricks. There's a whole bunch of guys. Like, Only from the, the Raiders. Yeah, Dalton Schultz, the yeah. tight end. All these free agents. I'm just hoping the Patriots get one of them, cause yeah. they yeah, they're trying to make they're trying to make moves, they're trying to make splashes, and just trying to put together a team that'll compete. Cause like I told somebody the other day, as long as they compete in the first year, they'll be fine. Because we all know, let it, let things look bad. The first sign of things looking bad, they're gonna they're gonna have like the pitchforks out trying to get him out of there. 
Facts. This is all. My thing is, when you was talking about Seattle and all these other things, I was just thinking to myself, yo, man, we got enough issues on, on our head. <laughs> we care about the rest of the league. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. I mean, I, I ain't part of the Patriots, but, you know, I root for the Pats. You know. Yeah. And I'll be honest, just living in this area is just better off. It's better when the Pats are good. Yeah, real better because you you could at least go about your day without hearing some nonsense. So this I'm just dealing with unnecessary attitude. Yeah, Cause somebody else do interceptions. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, what I do to you? <laughs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> let's move on to the NBA. <laughs> LeBron, he reached 40,000 points the other night. And I was listening to a radio show the other day, and it was just like, it's great for him to do that, but it kind of like, it's kind of like, we kind of, people knew this was coming right after he passed Kareem, because it was like, huh. every other point now, it's just, you know, just setting whatever the record's going to be when you retire to her. I think he finally knows what Steph Curry feels like. Oh, with the three-pointers, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every time Steph shoots a three, he makes a three, he's in the record. So right. it's kind of like, all right, 40 is good because you've never seen it. But now yeah. it's like, right, can, we stop, can we stop stopping games because of the situation? So, no, nah, I'm glad. I'm glad he got it. I'm glad they didn't stop the game for it. Yeah. I'm glad he's allowed him to play. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think they didn't stop the game for it because it was like they, done, they had a whole ceremony for him becoming number point. one. <laughs> That's my point. But, you know, who knows? If he would ask for it, mm. he probably would would have got it done. So mm. I'm just glad they just, you know. Uh, maybe he, you know, maybe he, uh, I don't know, LeBron seemed the type he would, he probably did ask for it, but maybe he was like, yeah, maybe not, let me, let me just chill and celebrate later or something I mean, like been that. The league. He's been the man of the league for like 20 years. Right, right, right. right. He's all right. Yeah. And at this point, as, at this point in his career, he's just playing for the records. And like, he, he, he really don't have nothing else to prove. He just... Got to play and see where he finishes. Uh, it's like, who, we're going to find out who's next that's going to catch him. But yeah, man, I'll just say just play as long as your body can hold up and you're still playing at the level you want to play at. Yeah. Well, it, he keep playing. If he, if he sticks around for another three years, he could go up to 45. I mean, I said it before. There's a certain era of people that we will just all basketball so yeah. we can play to a I would say longer A's and kids. The future, the, the skill set, athleticism is mm -hmm. crazy, but the focus is, isn't there because they have so many more distractions where, like, we were distracted, but it was always in distraction, but it was yeah. basketball involved to yeah. a certain extent. Like, video games, we didn't play many of but yeah. it was, you know what I mean? Yeah. Basketball. And, and also, he played when he, before getting to the league, like, he played in the time, that AAU circuit, where you weren't playing, like, 20 games a day. Only, like... like you play you're still like playing two or three. Yeah. yeah Nowadays they're playing like like five, six games a day or something like that. But also too, the the AAU is way is different. Like it's all year round. Yeah. I, I only know AAU in the summertime. Right. And then when you go to the GBC coaches, it's certain place service, certain yeah. tournaments, things like that. And um, um, yeah, like it's it's just too much wear and tear I think on kids. Yeah. And they're yeah. starting way younger. Yeah. Not saying they didn't have that when we were younger. Like I told you before, I didn't play youth sports, but I did play in the Pox and all that stuff. Right, 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 right. Club. So I had an idea of basketball, but I just felt like this AAU stuff so young is just you're not fully allowing the kid to develop. This is yeah. like me like watching Maddie play in the fifth grade. People ask me, You training yet? Like, no. She has to understand how to move on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. I can't just Tell her all these things, have all these skills, and her not know what to do with them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you and gotta get a feel for the game before you even get thrown yeah. into that skill. Yeah, so, and there was a, there was, a, I think there was an article like years ago, a couple of years ago, not too long ago, that it was talking about how some of those guys, some of the some of the new new age guys that get into the NBA, how they don't last in the NBA and they're having all these injuries is because their body's been, it's like. All that, all those games they played, like from AU and like high school, and if they went to college and stuff like that, how it's kind of like doing damage to them. So by the time they get to the league, it's just like trying to. Like a lot, like a lot of people be like the mama mentality, working out all day every day. Yeah, I did that as a teenager too, but I, I went away once a year with like you know what I mean my friends, family, and stuff. We used to go to the Patriots game yeah. every year, so like I got away for at least three or four days. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So right. like it's okay to step away from the game for a little bit, but 
you know, like it, it's just different. Everybody's body's different. Yeah. I tell people, your body's gonna hold up as well as your diet. <laughs> just because things you put in your body inflame your joints and things of that nature, so you have to be very aware of your diet. Like, yeah. A kid asked me at the gym yesterday, what do you eat? I just told him I don't eat peppers. I don't eat certain things that inflame your joints. So like it's just you said have to be very aware of yeah. those things. So. Yeah, <clears throat> and, and you also got to give your body a break. It's kind of like if you if you go to the gym every day, I mean, you know, and you you're not gonna lift seven days a week. You're probably gonna lift. Some people lift five days a week. Some people lift four. But then they do other stuff with like cardio and stuff like that. But then you still need a day to give your body rest, like a day or two, let your body just rest and heal up. Because you just keep going like that. You just you used to be liable to hurt something or break or pull something just because you're not, the body's working over overtime. Yeah, I mean, machineries, I feel like, are building the image of humans mm -hmm. in the extent in that they overheat. They need to relax, they need to sleep. No different than human being. Yeah. You know, the biology is yeah. kind of similar. Yeah. It's just one's metal, one's not. I say that to say this. <laughs> Kids, you all should take an anatomy and physiology class. You'll learn a lot. I took it. One and two. You'd be surprised how society's actually built and the ideals of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I only took those classes because I needed an elective. So, help me out. Help me out a lot to understand the human body. Um, more NBA. There's like 20 some odd games left in the NBA. Like we just go. We just gonna go through these standings right now. I'm not gonna get too in depth into it, but we're just gonna go through these standings in the East and the West. So one through ten, because uh, seven through ten is the playing games. I still don't understand that, but whatever. Seven through ten. Yeah. yeah. Still. <laughs> yeah. How you a seven seed <laughs> and you gotta still compete? That's crazy, <laughs> bro. Participation trophy, people, man. But as y'all see it, Celtics, <clears throat> Celtics with a big, big gap between first and second. They just, they just had everybody. The Bucks, they're starting to play a little. They're starting to play better. Cavaliers got that one point victory last night over the Celtics. Magic, pa Paolo's having, he's having this off a good second year. Yeah, the, yeah. The Knicks, the injured, <laughs> the injury riddled Knicks, they're over there at fifth. Miami. They're finally getting guys back, so they're at five. And then you go, we got the Sixers, the Pacers. That six through eight is all just separation of like one or two games. And then Bulls and Hawks, those close out the top ten. I still think they should just get rid of, go back to the one through eight makes the playoffs. We don't need these play-in games. Like, this is the only issue. If, <laughs> if Chicago and the Hawks end up that many games back, from the AFC, I, I don't feel like there's a point of a play. Right. If you have one or two games yeah. in that reach, yeah, you deserve a play. Yeah. But, like, yeah, if you have five, six, seven games back, like, come on, man. They're just not a good basketball team <laughs> or a playoff team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like, just, ooh, ooh, red light district. <laughs> And then in the West, Shea winning MVP? I think he won the MVP this year. I mean, as much as people have been saying it, but you know, mm -hmm. you kind of kind of speaking in fruition to existence, kind of like D Rose. <laughs> so, not saying D Rose didn't deserve it. Yeah. I'm just saying once he said it before the season started or during the summertime, yeah, everybody kept repeating it, repeating it. It's kind of one of them things. Like he's kind of like your first thought when you hit MVP. Mm -hmm. When you hit MVP, Shea comes to mind only because of how much you've been hearing. It. Yeah, and then when you look at his numbers, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, 31, yeah. five, five, and six. 54, and it's like, I think like there's some crazy stat about him down the stretch, like he's shooting like a crazy percentage during clutch time. I like, mean, they yeah. always complain about them giving it, you know what I mean, giving the MVP to plays that are on, you know, the winning teams mm -hmm. in the conference, but right. he has the stats also to back it up. Right, so like, right, right. There really isn't much of an argument yeah. other than like Jokic and stuff like that. But, yeah. Yeah, and we're seeing the young guys. The young guys are coming up, are stepping up in the West. We got Minnesota and Oklahoma City at one. Who would have ever thought a team with Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert would have the number one seed? But that's what happens when Ant Man decides I'm the big dog around here. Y'all just gonna have to fall in line. And it seemed like they were perfectly fine with falling in line behind him. Um, I don't think they had a choice, bro. <laughs> that's too. That too. 
They are there. I mean, they had their time to shine yeah. before he even got to the league. Yeah. So once somebody gets to the league and kind of takes, you know what I mean, hold and stand well, that's yeah. nobody's fault but your own. Yeah, yeah. And then unlike the what, unlike the East, 7 through 10, they're at least separated by like two games. We got three teams, 7, 8, and, seven, eight and 9, all with 34 wins, and then you got the Warriors at 32 wins. So at least, at least they're... Seven through ten playing makes sense, unlike the the East, because it is kind of like a yeah. On. That's the point. <laughs> they just try and like, I get it. You need spots on yeah. you know the television stations and things like that. You can't have a bunch of West Coast games, no East Coast games. But yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely can. Like they, yeah, like bro, right, right. <laughs> these, these teams are two two games back, tied. Three-way tie, like, come on. You know what I'm saying? That, that's yeah. deserving of a plane. Definitely. These definitely. other teams, man, they can just watch. Definitely. And the, and the thing with the, with the West is you can't afford to go on, like, two, three-game losing streaks, so or you might be – you might go from, like, uh, I feel like five and six because you might go from being five and six to, you know, you might be playing in the playing game if you don't end the season the right way. So. Yeah, man. Yeah, this but is – Getting that time, almost playoff time, man. Once the uh, end of March comes around, get to April, it's all time for the big dogs to step up. Man, we got, what do we got? We got, uh, oh, we got Joey Barrett, and we got Mark from the item. Joey Barrett. <laughs> I'm going to ask Joey about his boy. You seen his boy, Ryan Garcia, who's oh. trending. Oh, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, didn't, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I, I don't know either, but I'll talk to him about that. But we're going to talk some high school hoops. We got, we got two teams two teams in the, city, in the city left in the state tournament, so. Blasphemous. <laughs> Check this out, then we're going to come back. Yeah, man. We are back with Joey B. He's here. Well, Mark's not here again because Mark got hockey. <laughs> hockey. <laughs> Mark's not here, but I'm back and yeah, yeah, happy Mark, to be here. Mark tweeted out that like, he was he was okay <laughs> after last week's show. In case, in case anybody was wondering why he wasn't here last week. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> that was funny, but Mark got hockey. We got. We're coming down to the like last couple, like last two weeks of winter sports. We got two Lynn teams left in the tournament. Uh, Friday, yes, Friday we had some wild games, <laughs> wild games at both places at Lynn Tech and at St. Mary's. Uh, which one do you want to start with first? <laughs> you know what? It's your show. You uh, pick. Uh, let's start with St. Mary's. Okay. That I mean, minus the loss, that was quite the game. Well, quite the game. It's a great game if you're asking for a high school right. environment, atmosphere, great competition from young young men, and uh, it just didn't go. It was like it was, Mary's way it's what everything end. everything you'd ask for in a state tournament game. Back and forth, lead changes, some big plays down the stretch, some defensive plays down the stretch. Because I think St. Mary's had got a defensive stop to give them that position to get them to get themselves in that position to take the potential game winning shot. So th uh, yeah. that was. You know, there's just some, some maturity for the young team right there. Lots of maturity. Um, they didn't quit. They got the steal. They got the basket. Um, and they did get that chance right at the end. But it was no good. Uh, a great game from J.J. And it's uh, J.J. Martinez. And it was uh, Coach David Brown's first, first exit, first round exit um, since his tenure at St. Mary's. So, uh, you know, he was very vocal after the game. You know, he's proud of his boys and um, proud of what they were able to accomplish on the younger side. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean the score—the score the way it ended up. I don't think a lot of people saw that coming, just because they kind of played very well down the stretch to close out the season, mm -hmm. give, giving themselves some momentum. And then, especially, I think they, but they lose like one game at home this season, one or two mm -hmm. games at home this mm -hmm. season. They, they played really well at home, and sometimes, sometimes basketball is kind of like sometimes the shots just don't fall. <laughs> it's kind of like what it comes down to sometimes. Shots just not falling. I've. I've gone to a couple games recently where they just sometimes the better team wins, sometimes it's 50-50, and sometimes the ball just doesn't go your way. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm not saying that's what happened or what didn't happen, but 
uh, as long as you can take a positive from the negative yeah. moving forward. Uh, if you're St. Mary's, that's, uh, and I'm sure Brown and company will do that. And, yeah. uh, next year, they'll be better because of it. Yeah, I got, I got a lot of guys returning. They lost, I think, four or five seniors, uh, one, one senior starter. So they're, they're going to have the core of their starters come, coming back, and then some guys that were coming, up, that were coming off the bench probably going to be inserted into the starting lineup. So Are they Boverini favorites next year? Probably. 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 I mean, them in, te them in tech. Them in tech, because I know this, I know English won't be in it this uh, upcoming year. So, them right. tech. Well, we'll see. We'll see how teams look, because team, they might all look different by the time we get to basketball season in 2024 again. Um, Lynn Tech boys. Ooh. It wasn't looking too good in the first half. It was not looking too good in the first half. I, I think it was... It was their first home game as hosting a state tournament game. I think there was just a lot of nerves for some of those guys. It took them, luckily, it took, it, didn't, it took them the second half to settle down. So, you know, it didn't take too long for them to just refocus and settle into the game. But, yeah, at the first half, they just they didn't look like themselves. Those guys came in and they they just hit them, hit them in the mouth early. And it was kind of like they hit them with their own game with the fast break, high tempo. And tech, they was get, they were getting some shots, but they were turning the ball over here and there, missing some shots, missing some layups. It was just not, they weren't looking like themselves. Yeah, when you're on the younger side, those are some of the growing pains that will happen. Those slow, late starts. And, and Coach Corey Bingham was very clear when he said, you know, at halftime, I didn't really know what to say to those guys. You know, like what are you supposed to say in that moment? They all know what they have to do. So now it's just a matter of of execution and getting over those nerves, and they were able to do it. The crowd didn't hurt. Yeah, yeah, it was packed in that gym. It was packed in there. It was packed. A full house in that e newly renovated gym also helps having that newly renovated gym bringing everybody out. I gotta look, give a lot of credit. Edric Gonzalez, Jaden Welch. I mean, those two, those two guys, even Giovanni Jean. They they had a lot of guys that came in and step step up. Cesar Reyes, mm -hmm. he's really. I mean, he missed some few games early on because I, I believe he had injury. But then the games he, when, since he's been back and in the rotation, every time he comes in, he's just that guy, the hustle guy. He's gonna hustle. He's gonna play defense. He's gonna get you some steals here and there, and he'll make, he'll give you free some of some free baskets. But those other three guys, especially Welch and Gonzalez, those they, they play like seniors. They play like seniors. Yeah, not to sound like a, a broken record, but I think it takes two things for a, a younger program to succeed. It takes a, a coach with a vision which Corey has, and it takes young players to know their roles and buy in, and they, they've been doing it. Yeah, um, and now tonight they're, they're hosting Georgetown. They got a chance to go to the round of eight. For the, It's been a while. It's been, it's been a while. I can't think back of when, but it, it's been double digits years since they've been in the round of eight. And with this possibly being their last home game of the season, God, they gotta send. They gotta send the crowd off in the right way because yep. this is for the seniors. This is their last home game. You know, looking at the bracket, it's a really good one. Obviously, it's it's eight versus nine, I believe. But mm -hmm. uh, I've talked to a few people, and they say, "Oh, I'm going." And yeah. you know, a few months ago, I don't know if that was the case, or even a few years ago, and. And uh, a lot of people are excited with with who's in town and what Tech's been bringing. So yeah, uh, slow buildup. Yeah. It's been a slow. It's been a slow process. Kind of they can, you know, they kind of got back in it the scene last year, after not making it the first, uh, Coach Bingham's first year. But then now those guys they know what it takes. And I believe that if they win this, they have a potential matchup with the defending champs Wareham. Mm -hmm. I believe yeah. that's what the bra the bracket is looking like. So. Tough task, tough task. But if you want to be the champions, this is this is some of the stuff you got to deal with, and these are the ty types of games you got to be definitely on your A game for. But they got to get through tonight. They got to get through tonight. Try to get that try to get that win to punch their ticket. So, and I think they'll probably be playing Saturday, or so if they win tonight. So, number one, Wareham is is that's correct. They're waiting. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tech, you know, you got to win tonight, yeah. and then. Um, or Wednesday night if you're watching tomorrow, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's like when I have to write press time in right, my stories. Right, right, right. <laughs> but uh, you know, Wareham's waiting, and if you win tonight, it's a win-win because you either beat Wareham, and obviously that's good news, or you you learn from the experience. So yeah, you learn, what, opponent. you learn what it takes to 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 win a state championship. Luckily for them, they have a head coach who's been in these positions 
who's been in this position as a player. So he could, like, he can't play, but he could kind of tell them what to expect, and you know, just he'll have a, he'll have them ready. He'll, have, I think he'll have them ready, and I think, I think that second half. I think what they did in that second half will probably carry over tonight because they kind of saw what they didn't do in the first half, mm -hmm. and then they got it going. Um, the Lady Spartans, the Lady Spartans, the wagon rolls, the wagon continues, the dominance continues. They're back in the round of eight. Collective effort once again. They're just a just a just a team full of just a team a team full of players that can really really kill you on any any given night. Coach Jeff Newhall told me this after the game. Their star player, Bella Uwumi, freshman, said it after the game. That was the best they've played all season. Talk about playing well at the right time. Right. Uh, they're running up and down. They're rebounding. you got Reese Patella down low. You've got Jillian Roberts hit three straight left elbow threes in the fourth quarter. And uh, St. Mary's now is the, now's the time to be a St. Mary's yeah. girls basketball fan. And uh, they, they've just, they're just bought in. They yeah. have the culture. They have the plays, the they had, experience. They played, a, they played a tough schedule. They had a tough schedule this season with some of their non-conference games and some of even their conference games out there with teams like Bishop Fenwick, Cathedral, Bishop Feehan. So you had a bunch of top 10 teams or top 20 teams just in your conference that you had to play twice. So that, that makes you battle-tested right there. And Ap Apinequit, I believe it is. Ap Forgive me. I'm used to writing. <laughs> I went there. I, 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 yeah, I went there last year for a for the opening round game or preliminary one, round game. Yeah. So, yeah. But they are a strong program, really well coached, and they've got a primary ball handler. The name is, is missing me right now, but she started the game with a basket and hit a few threes throughout. Uh, Jeff was very complimentary of her after the game. And it was only 9-7 to seven St. Mary's after the first quarter. Mm -hmm. The second and third quarters and, and then the fourth were just beautifully executed from St. Mary's. Yeah, the, the team... Team putting it all together at the right time, or they were they're starting to hit their stride at the right time. And so a lot of experience too. There's a lot of experience on that team from the last two, three years. So yeah. we got, you know, they probably trying they're trying to get that three peat. It's hard to do, but gotta get through Andover. Yeah. Another tough team. Is that at St. Mary's? Nope. So St. Mary's is the five, Andover's the four. Ah, so they're Friday going at to six thirty? This man double check that. I hope it's tomorrow, because if it's tomorrow, I'll actually go. But it's Friday. There's so many games Friday. There's so <laughs> many. I don't know if you've seen the if you've seen the brackets and like the, some of the games. There's so many good matchups on Friday. It's kind of like you, you kind of you know, you'd wish they'd spread it out Friday and Saturday, but. Uh, oh you well. cover more teams than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lastly, we got to give a shout out to Lynn Tech girls. They didn't end up, their season didn't end the way they wanted to, but it, it's a tough task going into the defending state champs house a bit and trying to be the team that's really, a really, really good team that got pretty much everyone back from their, from their title run last year. And this is still a, a semi-young Lynn Tech team, like young in the aspect of they haven't really had this, this uh, to a tournament run like this yet. Be beforehand, so this was kind of their first experience of all that. So I, I give them a lot of credit. They just went in there. They never quit. Scoreboard, I mean, scoreboard was a scoreboard, but they never quit. They was playing, and you know, they team has a lot to look forward to next year because I believe they got most of the players coming back. They're gonna have a great year, and a team that Coach Caitlin Wetchler will tell you has gotten a lot more confident as the the year went on in terms of individual play. Um, and, and, and you know, just the roster is very strong. Mm -hmm. A lot of individuals who can, who can um, different individuals on different nights yeah. and can lead the team in scoring. And uh, it was a pleasure to watch them this year. Yeah, good, good, great coaching, great coaching job by Kaylee. She, I, did she win the coach of the year on the girls' side? Or you should, you um, know? I'd have to double check. Okay, I know Corey, Corey won it on the boys' side. Um, Edric won the MVP. Yeah, but I, I don't know if they announced it on the girls' side. I think I know the answer, but I don't want to say it in case I'm wrong. So. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Anyway, we, this is this is journalism at its finest, right there. Got to got got to make sure you got to make sure you cross your T's and dot your I's. Uh, so we're about to be at the game tonight, Lin Tech. Um, we covered all the teams I played. Yes, we kept. Kept ran into Clinton. Clinton um, they ran into Clinton. It was close in the first half and. From what Coach Moody said, it was just, just lost to a better team. That's pretty much all you can do. Yeah. Like give um, you just gotta tip your hat sometimes. You lost to a better team, and you know going on the road is tough. 
going on the road is tough in any sport, especially basketball, but just on the road, driving an hour away, I mean. There's so much mental that goes on with that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Moody was very proud of his team after the game. I talked to him right after, and uh, from an individual standpoint, from a culture standpoint, for mm -hmm. what they were able to accomplish, um, the Panthers will be back. Also, a lot, a lot going on with that school, so it's a good, that was just like a good little feeling they had just to give a, take people's minds off some stuff for, for a little bit um, with, the, with, with just the whole school in general. So like the boys, the boys basketball team was just doing, doing a great job playing. And yeah, I enjoyed watching those guys play to the, the games I went to. It was, it was feisty is what I called him. They're a feisty bunch, a, a feisty bunch. So they'll have some guys returning, returning for next season. So hopefully they learn from this. They can find a way, so they can find a way to put them, themselves in a position to host multiple playoff games. You know, like you said, those games against uh, Peabody and Bishop Fenwick definitely helped them. So for next year, they're able to schedule a couple more non-conference games that'll help them, you know, that'll help them boost, their, boost their rankings and help them get a spot in uh, a couple playoff games or one or two playoff games at home. Because that's kind of what you want. Exactly. But, you know, in terms of a reflection this season, 11 and 11, tournament appearance, a home win, and a few all-stars, that's, you know, well done. Can't ask for much more than that. Can't ask for much more than that. Uh, what do we got for articles this week? You got it. What we got for articles tonight. Speaking of Lynn Tech, we have an Endicott College student, Cameron Pleasant, who uh, chipped in and wrote a story about tech um, okay. that was in today's paper, Wednesday's paper. So check that out. And then uh, I'll be at the Lynn Tech game. And then Mark will be at two St. Mary's games, girls hockey and girls basketball. If the girls basketball is Thursday, I would have went. But it's Friday. Friday. I don't know. We might see you there. I got like two, I got, there's like three games I got to choose from. It's either go to Babson College for Lowell for uh, Lawrence and Catholic Memorial, go to Worcester for Worcester North and Lowell, or go to North Andover for Zavarian and North Andover. So, yeah, Division One is, the Division One bracket in the boys' side is out of control, but they got all these games Friday. Like, put them on, put a couple on Saturday for the people. I see you at Boston College every now and then. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Boston College, but I, you know, my last game, my last home game from there was a couple of weeks ago because state tournament taking up all my time. So yeah, I won't be able to make it. Tell me about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I think the I think the state championships is next weekend. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, so I might, you know, I'm supposed to go somewhere, but I might have to cancel that because of the state championships. Oh, man, we got to get out of here, man. Make sure you go follow Joey and make sure you go check out Item Live and read up the articles they got up on there as well. So, I mean, it's our high school sports up updates for y'all. We're out of here. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Y'all can't hear the behind the scenes conversation. <laughs> I mean, one day, maybe one day we'll unleash a few clips, not all of it. Because you don't really know me. <laughs> hey, man, let's go to Athletes Corner. And then and, and this week we have my boy Alex Ventura, Malden Catholic lineman, defensive lineman, offensive lineman. You know, just talk to him. Good time. He was another one I had in class that, you know, I had a group of kids that would just argue all the time about, non about nonsense. Yeah, about a bunch of nothing. Yeah, so <laughs> check this out and then we're going to come back. Hello and welcome to another edition of Athletes Corner. And we got another one for y'all. Another kid that was in my class <laughs> that decided to show up when he wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> you know, we got a modern Catholics, Alex Ventura. What is going on, man? I don't know. I'm good. How you doing, Mook? Cold, man. I was outside freezing. <laughs> yeah, you, you decided to come outside without a coat. Nah, I don't know. I thought it was, I just walked out of my house. I didn't think it was this cold. Did you, did you? <laughs> Did you not step outside earlier this morning? Nah, I go in the car. Uh, two seconds, I'm right in the car and I'm out, this right guy, to school. <laughs> this guy here, you see, this is what happens when you're big. 
<laughs> the hefty fellas, the cold weather. I don't feel the air to really hit. Oh my gosh, man. All right. <laughs> we got to yeah, talk about you, your football season. Um, made the switch over to Malden Catholic the, yeah, yeah. this past year. Uh, um, it's like a. With them, they're kind of trying to get things going over there. It's, yeah. been, it's been a process for them, like rebuilding, especially playing in the playing in the Catholic conference. conference as well. So it's like there's no easy easy matchups uh, each night. But um, how was like the the transfer for you going the adjustments um, you made? It was smooth. I mean, my teammates and my coaches made it real comfortable for me. Like I made connections right away, especially my quarterback, um, Coach Norton. He made it real easy for me. Settled me into the program, introduced me to everybody. And school-wise, I mean, teachers just help me out 24-7. They show you what to do, what not to do. They help you out with everything over there, so. Did, did, you, did, you, did you know some of the players already beforehand? Um, besides ben and, ben and Hayden Ford, that's really the only two players I knew. But oh. they helped me get in touch with everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys, it was an interesting year for you guys. You guys had some key moments. It was a game against I think it was, North Quincy. Yeah. That game felt like you guys were hitting on all cylinders yeah. offensively. You know, you got hurt that game, right? Yeah, yeah. sprayed MCO. You, you, this dude always getting hurt, man. Oh, all right, nah, that <laughs> But, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> um, yeah, that game, uh, his name's Jaden, right? Yeah, Jaden Williams. Jaden Williams, he was going off. He had that one little mistake, but it, it was it, everything was uh, was working. Was that just you guys and the pro, the, the guys that's been in the program just uh, getting things going and trying oh. to help? I don't even think it was. I think that was like our first game where we like connect as a team. Like mm -hmm. the first games, like like Wyndham, we lost by one point, couldn't make the field goal. I think there were games where, as a team, we weren't clicked yet. We were real young. Yeah. We have 25 juniors, and some of us didn't even play together for the first time. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think that's the game where we as a team just clicked, got in touch with the playbook, and just made it happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how is that? Um, just that. That's that whole thing when it's like you got everybody's trying to get adjusted. Yeah. Especially with the coaching, with the coaching staff and the um, offense and the, like whatever the scheme is going on. Like, how long does it normally take to just get it all together? If, in your in your opinion. I mean, I don't know. For us, I mean, it really took like that first two or three weeks to like get used to each other because some of us didn't play with each other, like I said. But coaching wise, I mean, with our coaches, like personally, like they made it. They made sure that we like we were on each other. That we made sure that we knew what we were doing, and they were like really part of our like. A point of where they helped us build the chemistry because mm -hmm. they were real our coaches are vocal like they they'll get in your face to tell you what you're doing wrong but at the end of the day when you do something right they'll let you know okay yeah. you did this you're doing good like they're really like the coach that you like that you want yeah yeah uh that kind of started in like camp uh during the camp yeah uh -oh. i think i think they like they eased me into it because i wasn't getting like like let's say like kids that were already there i wasn't getting like that that in your face, like, oh yeah, like you're doing this wrong. Like my first couple weeks there, then once I settled in, it was like, I got used to being in the program. Like they don't treat you different. Like yeah, it's like when you got a new girlfriend, you got yeah. you got to yeah. treat her, treat her, treat her, treat her correctly before you start, <laughs> <laughs> before you start yelling and uh, you know yeah. before your true personality comes out. <laughs> uh, for for you going going from English to to Molly Catholic, you gotta just. You gotta wear uniforms yeah, that's... all the time. You gotta adjust to that. You're also adjusting to you're not having 30, 40 kids in the classroom, the classroom and stuff yeah. like that. Is that the biggest the biggest adjustment? Is just like the smaller classrooms yeah, and the uniforms? I, I think it helped me. The uniforms, I mean, I don't, I'm never gonna I, like, I, I, it's, it's whatever. I don't like wearing khakis and a polo to school every day, but it is what it is. Um, having a small class actually helped me out. Like, I feel like teachers give you more attention, you get more help. I mean, the work is harder. I mean, like, like I have to go from having a D average to play sports. It's like a, I think I have to have like a 73. I can't like, if you fail off, you don't have above a 73. Like, Ooh, wow. you fail at a C. So I mean, you get used to it, but it is really hard. It's a hard adjustment, but yeah, yeah, yeah. they help you out. Uh, all right. So we did say you guys played in a, in one of the toughest conferences, the the Catholic conference. Um, you know, you got you got two two state champions that were that were coming off of that season, and then you got one. For this year, but how was it those matchups where you going against St. John's Prep? You going to, you going against BC High, who just came out of nowhere to have a great year. Yeah. You going against Malden, um Catholic Memorial, and you know, and those teams. Like, how how was that preparation wise? Knowing like each week, it's, it's not. I easy mean, task. I think the way our schedule is set up, we got to play every single one of them back to back to back. So <laughs> I mean, it was rough, but I feel like 
some teams we had our we, we held our own, but obviously like we're really young and we like we were there. Like Severian and Sage's prep, I had to say were the hardest games because mm -hmm. those two teams were like they're like juggernauts. They like they have yeah. huge old. They're all their whole line is solid. Yeah, yeah. They're all they've been clicking since their freshman year. Yeah. I mean like they're they're such a good team that like Edwin came in and he fit in the program right away. Like he was just there. Yeah. So I mean it's hard, but like teams like BC High, Calvin Moore that we like we hang in with, we held our own with. Being a young team, I mean, it's you gotta just be there. Like it's a mental thing. Like nobody's better than you. Like you just you telling yourself that they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, the, what you said about um, Zavarian and uh, St. John's Prep is like those teams. They're kind of the whole makeup of their team is the offensive line. Is yeah. like, and then because I remember St. John's Prep, a few of their offensive line went down. And it was just like, all right, yep. next one up. And it was just like you got another 6'3", 300-pound kid coming at you. I mean, yeah, it's, it's just the way that program's built. They have kids stacked up. Yeah. But, I mean, personally, on a personal standpoint, I don't think it was really hard. I mean, I'm playing in and out every week. I'm playing a D1 kid. It gives me looks. So. Yeah. But I don't think it was, per like, uh, a hard switch or yeah. crazy difference from the GBL because we played teams like Methuen or Everett. Yeah, we had yeah. kids like that, so. I would say I was prepared to go into that. Like, I knew what I was going into. Yeah, yeah de definitely. Um, like, what, what did you do to kind of get yourself get yourself better? What were you working on after when you guys came off, when you came off that last season at English after that Thanksgiving game? What was, like, one thing you took from that off season that you were, like, going to focus on that, that helped you this past season? Well, I mean, the season before that, I didn't really take the gym serious. Um, be honest with you, like, I didn't, like, try like I didn't try in the gym or outside of football season. So what happens when you're a big boy? Yeah so I mean I took the gym more serious. <laughs> I mean I needed to get my footwork because I did like I had problems with my footwork in my sophomore year at English. Yeah. So I mean on the field I like I got on the field consistently. I, I worked on my footwork and made sure I had my steps down right so I could be the player I was this year. Yeah uh, I mean yeah um, how many games you missed this year? Uh, I think I missed two. Conquered Carlisle, and then actually no, it was just that one game. Just that one game. Well, I rushed myself back. I, I, <laughs> I like <laughs> like the next game. I missed that game. That Conquered Carlisle game. We won twenty eight to like seven, and then I like I was like, all right, I don't want to miss out on another win. And it was BC High, so it was our game to make the playoffs. We lost, but uh -oh. I like wrapped my knee up. Took like six ibuprofen to call it a day. And I this played. Guy. <laughs> what did you want to like hold it off? Just cause knowing that you guys just won the game. You said, like, nah, cause like another week. I mean, and it was the game to make it in, and these two, like, this is a team where I wanted to play the kid, like, the kid who was, like, I was matched up against, yeah. like, for, I've been wanting to play him for a while. Oh. I heard he was really good, so, I mean, I held my own. The kid ended up getting hurt, so, I mean, I, oh. like, <laughs> I don't know. But. I'm not laughing at that part. I'm just laughing, like, just, that's, that's, what a coincidence, huh? <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I just wrapped it, took Ibro from played, because, I mean, I, it's not even that. I wanted to be there for my team, too. I wanted to win with them or yeah. make sure I was there, even win or loss. All right, now you guys got, you said you guys got a whole bunch of guys coming back uh, yeah. this uh, coming season. And once again, it's, the conference is going to be, the conference has guys coming back as well. So um, what, do you, what, do you guys, what do you think you guys have to do this upcoming season to, to give you guys that chance to make that, to make that playoffs? I mean, just work as a team. I mean, we've been together for the past month already, just lifting, working out on the field. We've been together, though. And it's not just like a collective. It's just like the whole team. We're mm -hmm. together. We do. We lift together, eat together at lunch. We run the field. We just want to click as a team, have that chemistry that we had at the end of the year this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're going to need it. You're going to need it because I'm, I'm pretty sure the non-conference schedule might be a little... Yeah, we got some tough teams in our conference this year. So the way the way, this, the way these teams got to schedule these nowadays, uh, who who's on the non-conference schedule? Uh, oh, I think we have Wyndham and Bedford again. So Wyndham number four, New Hampshire. They're coming to you guys. Yeah, they're coming this year. That's number four in New Hampshire. Um, Concord, Bedford, and North Quincy again. Obviously, I think those are the only four right now that I know off the top of my head. So okay, North Quincy. There's like a little back end. Like a yeah, little they like. The year before I came, I guess they spanked MC or whatever. Uh, it's not even really a question. It's not going to happen again while I'm here, at least. I mean, <laughs> that's just not going to happen while I'm here. So. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that North Quincy game, though, that was a, that was a funny game, though. That was a funny was. game. That was a funny game because the way y'all started was like, we looked like it was going to be one of those, like, 14-7 games, the way the way things were going. Yeah, then out of nowhere. Yeah, then out of nowhere, it was just an offensive explosion. But, I mean, did y'all get on him for fumbling that ball at the one-yard line? He said, he came off the side and said, I thought I was Dion. He, 
I don't know what he thought he was doing. He like, <laughs> I think he had a moment where he was like, he was trying to celebrate. Our coaches rashed him. It was mad. It was funny at first, but then it was like we just wasted a touchdown because at the time it was a close game, so yeah. everybody was mad. But yeah, I, I was I was legit. I was so confused when I saw it happen. I'm just like, did he really just fumble at the <laughs> one yard line? Just nobody. Nobody near him. him. Nobody near him. Twenty yards nobody. away from everybody. Nobody near him. Uh, who, who are the players that we're, we're going to see that, that's really going to have a big year next year for you guys that um, probably didn't going to get more opportunities this upcoming season? Um, I think a big name next year. I mean, Ben's already a big name on our team. So, yeah. I mean, but besides him, Hayden Ford, um, Richie Avery, Dermis Habitom, and Trey Turner. Richie Avery, his dad. His dad, his dad runs uh, Manning. Yeah, yeah, that's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> but... Dermis, Trey, Trey Turner, Dermis Habitom, and I mean one big player I think is gonna have a good season is receiver, Matthew Smith. He's he's good. Okay, okay, all right. We're gonna we're gonna keep an eye on that for right, for yourself. I know this is that point. You, you're a junior, so you get in college. You got to start preparing yourself for colleges and stuff like yeah. that. Um, have you been speaking with schools? Uh, have you been uh, going on visits? Or I mean, yeah, like? a couple came into school. I mean, these past two weeks, um, people who came into a school at least. Um, Fordham, um, shout out Coach Burns. He came through, talked to us. Um, I might butcher this name, no lie. Um, I think it's like Merida, Merida, ah, Merida. Marista. Yeah, Marista, yeah, all right. See, I was told you I was going to butcher it. Marista, they came through, shout out Coach Damon. <laughs> they like, they're real interested in our school. Me. Where is that school? I think it's like, like, Kipsey, New York, something like that. Oh, upstate New York, huh? It's, it's deep. You know where that is? <laughs> I don't know where that is. They said middle of nowhere. I was like, all right, wow. Yeah, that sounds like a boarding school. <laughs> but besides that, I mean, on the phone, I've talked to me, um, AIC, American International, um, and UNH, that's it. Okay, okay, yeah. You don't want to go nowhere warm? I don't know. I, nobody, <laughs> nowhere warm has called me, I guess. Like, I want somewhere warm. You got, you got, get that film out there. Get I try guys. to. Get, get those all these, all these cold colleges want me. <laughs> I, hey, they need the big husky guys up here, man. <laughs> be, that's that's how it is. Um, I told y'all disclaimer. He was in my class. Like, <laughs> we, we, we won't talk about. We won't talk about that. Dude. There's think, some stuff I can't talk to y'all about. These kid, what these kids was doing in that whoa, class. Whoa, 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 not me. I I'm, was, joking. I'm joking. I just sat in the corner over there. I just didn't want to go to class. They, these boys would. They came to the class to argue. Oh no, I was mad. They funny. legit came to the class to everything. argue. Basketball, this guy football. would be in an English class. He goes to the bathroom. He ends up in my class, <laughs> and there's a 45 minute argument happening. Him, Mac, Barbosa, yeah, the same three, all the time, and it's always about the same thing: who's better, who's the better <laughs> lineman, who gave up more sacks. Uh, oh my gosh, y'all were, y'all were a mess. That was a topic. I nah, mean, y'all were a mess. See, but that was the thing, though. I think that was, like, what happened with English. Us, too, we were, like... I mean, English in general is just a place where, like, it's always, like, animosity, I mean. No, you guys were a mess. <laughs> y'all were just a mess. Y'all would argue for the dumbest things. No, I would. And I would just sit there, like, do y'all hear yourselves? Y'all don't... No, but we argued over everything. <laughs> yeah, I got some of the... Vi I got the videos. <laughs> I do have the videos of them arguing. And it's, it's like, man... It's like when cousins see each other and they just... Nah, we basically were like brothers. We argued about everything. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was mad funny, but... Yeah. I miss that about English. See, that's different. I don't see that anywhere about a Catholic. Oh, my God. Everything's too quiet over there, like... Yeah, that's usually what happens when you go to private school. It's too quiet. You know? It's too quiet because people are being productive Dude. and getting things done, y'all. That's the difference, though. People, like, over there, like, they like they want to focus on school because they're paying to go there. So, I mean. Uh, yeah, your parents are giving paying. all that money. Man, we got to get out of here. We, we doing all this talking. I got to drive to Boston. We got to get out of here. Um, plug in your social medias. Uh, plug in your huddle page and all that. That's your camera right there. All right. All um, right. Follow me at AVT underscore Huncho. Um, my huddle, I think I was saying to MOOC, but I don't know that by, <laughs> by the top of my head. I don't know it. I actually don't know off the top of my head. I think it's just my name. We we, we go say this later. Um, yeah. Yo, what's wrong with you? How do you not know your own huddle? I don't page? know. I just be sending it out. <laughs> I say I just send out my film at Sim MOOC. <laughs> I'll be looking at my name. <laughs> Somebody might have access to your huddle page and try pretending to be you now. <laughs> like that. 
Hey, man, we got to get out of here. Y'all been watching Athletes Corner. That's Alex Vittorio. Y'all have That's a good one. This dude here, man. <laughs>
Okay. It was a surprise because oh. she's a big fan of, of Maya Moore. I think okay. that's like one of her favorite players. So it was, I mean, yeah, I don't know if you saw it, but yeah, it was a, it was like a surprise. They just surprised her with well, it. People don't know, like, my, Maya Moore is like the greatest. Like, at each level. Like, she's one of the greatest female basketball players of all time. And I'm not just talking about, like I said, he said all levels. She got four WNBA championships that most of y'all probably don't even know about. Yeah, and just I think, because the, I think she got three college. And yeah, something and like I that. And I think four high school. Yeah, like the Minnesota Lynx is probably my favorite WNBA franchise just because of the plays they had and what they was doing. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. Kudos, congrats to Caitlin Clark. The Women's March Madness is going to be wild. It's going to be wild because there's, yeah, there's a plethora of teams that I, could be that could I, win it. I'll be honest, man. I think it's going to be more entertaining than the boys just because... Names. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't hear about Edie and whatever his name is yeah. just because, like, they've been in college forever and they, they should have been in the league. Yeah. So, like, the WNBA got star power on so many teams. Even some of the teams that, like, are on the back end of the rankings. They got a couple plays. Yeah. That'd be killing. So yeah. I just think overall it's gonna be good basketball. Yeah, there's, yeah, and there's there's a few storylines going into it that you could kind of prep up and hype up to get people even more interested. But yeah, the you know South Carolina trying to go undefeated, yeah, LSU trying to remain, trying to go back to back, Iowa trying to I don't know when the last time Iowa ever won anything, but they're trying to get one. And then UConn, they still got all all yeah, those players yeah, and they come back to form. Yeah, even uh, USC, they may they might not win at all, but they got some entertaining players on the team. USC yeah. got the best player in the country. All right, I'm right. sorry, I like Caitlin because you know Caitlin, Caitlin, but Juju, something yeah, different. Juju, Juju different, Juju different. Um, Dartmouth men's basketball, they joined the union. They're not the first. Well, they're the first team that's actually been able to do this. Northwestern tried it a couple years ago. And it was like, they, they got denied and stuff like that. But for the Dartmouth, this is like the first known program to do that. And, I mean, it makes all the sense in the world when you think about it. I, these, guys make, these guys make money for the school. If you make money for something, you should be comp compensated. And people like education is your compensation enough. Now, like, now, question, does like trustee donations count as well? Battle, so. Like they, if they come to the game and they like the product that you put out and they start donating more money, just well, ask you. I don't know. I don't know. Or like ticket sales. And I th all th yeah, stuff. I think it's like the ticket sales, the revenue. Well, I was wondering if they sales. could trickle down to high school or something like that. Uh, <laughs> I made a lot of money for St. Mary's, man. <laughs> but I had that fro. I had some, some teachers and faculty tell me, like, yo, you know, you got a lot of donations for us. Like, so I, I was just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> That was my junior year, by the way. <laughs> hey, but, now, nah, but, yo, shout out to Dauphin, though, it's because the NCAA some sneaks, some snakes that know every trick of the trade when it comes to the, the you know, the, um, the law aspect of things. So I'm glad these kids are able to put their foot down and some and somebody supporting them because there's a lady behind this whole movement yeah. they are going on. I, I, it's funny, you sent this the roundup and I actually was watching something about it. Oh, okay. It. So, yeah, so um, I think it's dope. I think all colleges should follow suit because yeah. college athletes need to be protected. But you already know some of the some of the backlash, some of the cons behind it is some teams could hold you as an employee. Yeah. So, but that's no different than not playing well. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like they, they, they're using that as kind of like the scare plays. But it's mm -hmm. like we're we already held to a different standard than regular people even understand. Right. So like we if we suck, we know we're gonna ride the bench. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> compared to somebody that doesn't do their job surprised that they're fired. Right. Like, what? Me? Why? Like, because you suck at your job. Right. And you're late every day. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's a, great, that's, a great, that's a great point right there, actually. That's a great point. Um, so, like, we already have, a, we already have an employee mindset a long yeah, time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, Northwestern, I think Northwestern football tried a couple. It was either, I think a football and basketball program tried it. Some players tried it a couple years ago. Didn't work, but they were still, like, the first to do it. So, might see more of this. Might see more of this. They need to protect themselves. Yeah. So, but, like I always said, though, College sports was a lot better when these dudes was getting money illegally. Yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot better when they were getting money illegally because cause they was out there playing like, ooh. <laughs> and unfortunately, some of these kids now, they targets before they even realize they're targets. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see if somebody else follows suits. Um, 
there was a whole nother thing with the University of Florida firing everybody in their diversity, equity, and inclusion department. And that's a whole nother story. Like, Florida, at this point, the state of Florida, I'm, I don't know why anybody would even want to be there because they're just going backwards with everything. So. Yeah. What we got for boxing, Pedro? That ain't boxing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, last week, um, uh, let me bring it up, uh, Amanda uh, Serrano against uh, Minky. They were supposed to face each other um, in Puerto Rico, but something happened to her, uh, so she didn't fight. Something, uh, some eye injury uh, came mm. about. Mm. What was she doing the night before? <laughs> so, minutes before the fight. <laughs> so, she spent all morning trying to get that out. Signed by, um, uh, uh, what is it, Jake Paul? Yeah. Uh, he did fight, though. And this is what. Oh, somebody said, hey, you want to go Jake Paul fight? Oh, yeah, sure, I'm Puerto Rico. But I'm not flying to Puerto Rico to go watch that. No. Nah, shout out sure. to the people that went, though, that were already out there. Yeah. So uh, it's fight week. Uh, Joshua against uh, Nganu. Oh, yeah, they just had the press conference, right? Yep. So there it is, man. That's this um, Friday. Now, question. Is that the actual size in the guy who's head? Because he looked like <laughs> dinosaur in this graphic. Yeah, that's for sure. No, I think that is a Jeez. Yeah. 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 That's a helmet. <laughs> yeah, he got Saudi a face mask. Yeah. Damn, uh, you hitting that? We got the Saudi um, money involved. Yeah, yeah. That, that Saudi Joshua money. Joshua's face look all soft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said that doesn't look like Anthony Joshua. Was yeah. And yeah, now he got muscles. <laughs> People got to see the old ass though. Oh, my God. Total transformation. Uh, all right, that's the boxing. <laughs> Boxing up there. Oh man, before before I do this, we gotta give some shout outs to some folks. First off, we gotta give shout outs to our guys, Mason and Alonzo. They're playing in the Sweet 16 for Keene State. They're down there in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh. So they play Friday. So good luck to them. Um, we gotta give a shout out. Marquise Avery committed to go play football at University of Rhode Island. Okay, cuz do you think so man? Congratulations to him. Kimani Phipps, Valeri Cruz, they'll be going to Anna Maria. Anna Maria College for football. Shout out to them. Uh Jalen okay. Echeverria, Conference All-Star. He was named Conference All-Star. Okay, okay. Shout out to him. Uh Joshua Shane Jean was rookie of the year in their conference. That's dope. That's dope. Um who else we got? Who else we got? Who else got? What else we got? Some other players. A lot of guys, a lot of guys have made some decisions for college. Oh, um, well, I'm not going blank right now. <laughs> John Maskey, he's, he'll be going to Pace University. Okay. I think that's a Division Two foot. That's Division Two out in New York. Yeah, I'm just glad these kids are uh, going places. Brian Vaughn Jr., he's going to like Western Connecticut State University, so somewhere in Connecticut for football. No, West Coast. I think I don't know, their, their colors is like orange and something. I think West West Coast was I think orange and blue, orange and blue and white. Yeah, but he he and now he made that decision last week. He played, made well, the announcement. So shout out to all the kids going yeah, to college. Yeah, sh man. shout out shout out to all of them. And shout out to everybody successful and shout out to Mason. Yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alonzo. Yeah, kudos to those guys. Ended up a lot of kids, bro. Yeah, I'm trying to blank just now. Me, bro. <laughs> um, and before we get out of here, check out this mic'd up. I had the student section mic'd up at the Lynn English Marshfield game. This was the second time I've mic'd those kids up. Hot mess, hot mess. But what I will say this, people give a lot of flack to Lynn kids, thinking Lynn kids are disrespectful. But if you listen, one of the kids is like, listen, uh, we got to be respectful to the to the opposing team's parents, right? Like, let's be respectful to them because we are talking mad trash about their kids. So let's be respectful to them. Uh, like, I was just like, I'm glad he did that because sometimes people go a little too far. So, nah, but some, there's always one or two people that ruin their face. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't stand them too. Yeah, for real. But <laughs> shout out to Larry for saying that. But check this out, and then we're going to come back because we got to get Joey in here. And, yeah, it's been a good week. Oh, yeah, hold on. Jake? Jake, Jake, you saw the layup. You can't do that, pal. Wait. James, you can't do that. Mike, stop it. Yep, told you. Mike, stop it. He's wide open. You're one for five. You're supposed to do that, buddy. You were wide open. You're one for five. You can't guard him. I'm telling you, you can't guard him. James, 
You can't guard him neither, pal. Brady, you're a little boy. Brady, you're a little boy. Yeah, you, you're a little boy. Get in the weight room. James, James, so are you really 5'7", or is that what you just tell people? Yo, Jake, you're a little boy. Gotta get you in the weight room, too. Yo, Mr. Ref, even though you can't dab me up, I'm really messing with your shoes, man. Jake! 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 Give me three! Not chill. We have to be respectful to the parents. They, they've been good sports about us bullying their kids. They've been good sports. You still have your warm-up shirt on. Sit down. Have any of you come off the bench? I would love to know. Have any of you come off the bench? Yo, Jake, put the ball down. Jake, what are you doing? Jake, what are you doing? Jake, what are you doing? Pipe down, buddy. Pipe down, buddy. Pipe down. Coach, that was one of the best basketball, high school basketball games I've seen. Um, your sophomores, they came up big. Your seniors stepped up big. Talk about Travis coming off the bench. Just That's tough to hit those shots in moments like that, and he nailed them with no problem. Uh, quick story, Mook, right? You know you've been around me. You've been a, you're a Lynn historian, man. You got hats off to the city, man, for coming out, showing us love, because you know how it is. You know, they don't have to do it, and they showed us love, but Trav, man, Andy got hurt, you know, in towards the end of the season, and he got his groove, you know. It's not, you know, you don't never want nobody to get injured, you know, but the next man stepped up and he shined in the role and he actually felt like, you know, he could do it. Yeah. And you get those big moments when, you know, you get that confidence in those games yeah. and it just makes it even better with the crowd. The feeling was yeah. electrical in here, Move. Uh, your guys, they've been through first game down 20, down 22, came back. This game, it was a back and forth game. It all came down to Who's gonna make the little plays? You got, you got, Andy made that layup. Jaden made the three. Edric was making plays. You got, your guys were making the little plays, especially down the stretch when you needed them. They got those defensive stops that you needed. Yes, that's what we preach, Move coming into the season. Every game, the, oh, it's for us to get our lead. It has to be three stops. I want three stops, because you get three, create six, six creates nine, next thing you know, the game's over. So the guys bought into that, you know, a little bit in the fourth quarter, could have did a little bit more in the first and second, but they just fought it out all the way and showed the real gritty Tiger pride. All right. The road don't get easier for you guys. You guys are up next as the defending state champions. You guys are off to wear them. How excited are you just for the opportunity these guys will get just to test themselves again some more, because it hasn't been an easy road. Yes, um, as you said, we're him as the defending champ. So if we want to be the champs, we got to go and take the champs out. So what other better way would you want it to take the champs out to get there, baby? All right, Coach, congratulations you, and good luck. You. Fellas, woo! <laughs> you guys come back from 22 the other night. Now you're playing a back and forth game, fourth quarter. Walk me through that three-pointer you made to create that separation. Three-pointer, uh, and Andy drove, uh, drew the help, kicked it out. I knew I had to knock down the shot. Yeah, man. Uh, seems like it was like you guys had to make every little play because they they wouldn't go away. I mean, how did how deep did you guys have to dig in just to cut, just to make that to create that gap? We had to dig deep. It was a really hard game. They were a really well defensive team. They always played help. We had to keep running through sets after set, try to get the open shot, and trying to get it downloaded. Me and Edric. All right, Trav, my guy. You just made four of the biggest free throws you'll make I had to, so I had far to. early in your career, man. What were the feeling like? I know the crowd was here. You, everybody had your back. Just talk, walk me through those uh, two best slopes. The crowd was crazy. I just knew because I made two in the beginning and missed, then missed two. So I know how to bounce back and hit those four in a row to seal the game. So yeah, I knew for my teammates. You came off the bench, got, got, some, got some buckets when you guys weren't scoring. Um, how big was that? Because Gio got in foul trouble. And, you know, you, you and uh, Andy had to step up for that. And yeah, I had to, to take step place, up. Man. I knew once – I knew – he usually fouls a lot, so you know I knew how to step up. So once he fouled out, I was like, I had to step up, hit those four big shots. So, so the game. The road doesn't get easier for you guys, but you guys are off to face the defending champs. Wear him. I don't know what day it is, Friday or Saturday, but how excited are you guys to test yourself some more against the team that everybody thinks is going to win it all? 
so excited. This is the matchup that we wanted. We believe that we can win it all, and they're, they're the next uh, team in our way. We got to beat them and move on to the next game. All right, and lastly, how the crowd here? It was packed. The gym was packed. Gym was packed for the last game, man. How did that help you guys? The crowd was electric. Just, hear, just hearing them cheer on when we play in defense, we're getting stops. It just makes everyone want to play harder. Yeah, it everything. Energy, everything. So that's how me make my first my four free throws. <laughs> not gonna lie. Fellas, good work out there, man. Big win, and good luck Friday. Yeah, thank All right. You. <laughs> All right, and we are back. Okay, we got two teams in the city left in the state tournament. Lynn Tech, they're playing today. They win today. They're going to be in the round of eight. And I think if they win, they'll be playing the defending champs wear him. Don't quote me, but I think that would be the matchup, the matchup in the round of eight. So good luck to Tech. I'll be in the building. I'll be there tonight. I'll be on the mic. I'm trying to get Todd on the mic. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> try, try, try to get him on. Trying to make it though. Trying try to make get him on the mic for a little bit. I don't have to be for the whole game, but you know, I'd be in, I'd be in there entertaining myself. Um, oh, we gotta give a shout out. Um, this man, his name was Michael. He came up to me. Came up to me a couple weeks ago at a game. He 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 likes what we do. That's he watches us. He out. watches us. Shout out to you, thanks, Mike. Yeah, um, the Marshfield folks. Shout out to everybody in Marshfield. The head coach, some of the players, some of the parents. They like it. They watch. They That's watch. Dope. They watch. They came up. They came up uh, to me during the game. Those are other people. I can't name right now, but there was, I've had a, I, everybody that's came up to me and said they love the, they love the play by play. They love watching on YouTube. Shout out, thank, thank you. I thank think Sully's from Marshfield. Either Mansfield or Marshfield. I'm gonna double check on that. Though. They green, they green and white, right? Um, yeah. How they both green and white? Though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I'm gonna find out where Sally's from. I think I think it is Marshfield, though. Hey man, we, we gotta get out of here. Uh, happy belated birthday to Katie. Her birthday was yesterday. Shout out to her. Um, yeah, we'll see you when we get back. <laughs>